South Carolina basketball fan, you must be living right or doing something or eating your black eyed peas. I don't know, but everything is going right for you. In this video, we are going to talk about Tahina Pow Pow announcing that she is going to return next season to South Carolina. Before we start, if you like the content, then please consider subscribing and give the video a like. All right, let's get into this. Now, I said in an earlier video that I thought Tahina Pow Pow was the most impactful transfer this season. Like, I know Lauren Betts has been great for UCLA and exactly what they needed as well. But these two would be one, two. As, as well, LSU fan, I know Anissa Morrow has been great as well. But in terms of a fit for what that team needs, Pow Pow was exactly what South Carolina needed. And I know that's a Captain Obvious statement right there as everybody watched the Final Four and how Iowa basically dared them to shoot from outside and they could not do it successfully and that is why they went down. To be fair though, Raven Johnson did continue to shoot after the wave off from Caitlin Clark and she did make her shots before I get corrected by South Carolina fan. But obviously they did need an outside shooter and Tahina Pow Pow delivered, shooting 48% this season from three-point line, as well overall 43%. She's averaging 11.5 points per game and getting 27.5 minutes per game. But more importantly, she not only brought her shot, which South Carolina desperately needed and has made them extra deadly, but she brought her leadership as well. I strongly encourage you to watch the Haley Jones podcast that Tahina Pow Pow was on. She really gives it up in that interview. Haley Jones did a really nice job with that. Pow Pow talks at the start of the season. They didn't know what sort of team they had. She was like, I didn't know if we'd be in the top 10 or what. We were all over the place, and it was just really unclear, and we had so many young players that hadn't played for an extended period of time. Now, Staley has said the same thing. Like, in one of the press conferences, she... She was asked to compare this year's team to last year's team. And she was like, last year's team was like students going for their doctorate, like very mature. And she's like, this year's team, it's like listening to them talk in the locker room. It's like going to child care. And she talked about how early in the season that they were driving the coaches crazy with all their talking. But then finally, they just gave up on it and said, that's who they are. They can be who they are. And it's been successful. And she's proud of them for the way they've gone. And, and, and that's the case with this team. So with, with Pow Pow coming back, it, it takes the pressure off because honestly, South Carolina has not been playing their best basketball over February, but that happens to a lot of teams. You get tired legs and February is just a grind. And, and Staley pointed that out and said, you know, we've been focusing on moving the ball more and we're trying to get back to where we are, but it's clear that they're not as sharp as when they came out versus Notre Dame or early in the year when they were blasting teams, but I would expect them to be sharp once the tournament starts. The SEC tournament should be interesting. The hope is that, or at least my hope is, they'll face LSU again, but it seems unlikely. Somebody's going to take a loss. There'll be an upset in there somewhere, I would think, but if it doesn't happen, then great. Let's get it on. LSU, South Carolina, take two. Sounds good to me. But even if South Carolina loses in the SEC tournament, I don't think that is the worst result in the world. Of course, YouTube guys like me would go on and say, oh my God, the sky is falling. South Carolina slumping going into the tournament and they have no hope. But that's not true. Dawn Staley would be plastering that all over the locker room. It gives her team a bit of a chip on their shoulder to go get the chip. And, that's, and, and the thing with... Tahina Pow Pow coming back. Basically, they have two chances to get the chip, essentially. They are the young, cocky team going in this year with players that haven't had a lot of tournament experience, obviously, besides Cardoso and Tahina Pow Pow and Raven Johnson. But players like Hall and Watkins and Chloe Kitts, they haven't had a lot of time or tournament time, which is fine. Sometimes ignorance is better than knowledge because you don't know any better. Just go out there and play and be arrogant and that you're good. As oftentimes that's easier to play that way than everybody saying, yep, yeah, you are the can't lose number one team and there's no way you can lose this. But now if they do, then they'll just come back next year. More experience with your young players. They really have two shots at the cherry. 
as I don't think anybody will be foolish enough to underestimate South Carolina next year as they have Watkins coming back who could easily slide over to the center position and then they would have Kitts it forward and then Hall at forward and then the same trio of guards of Full Wiley, Raven Johnson, and Tahina Pow Pow. That looks pretty good. In addition, we haven't even mentioned Sanaya Fagan would be coming back and Joyce Edwards, number one recruit, and Tack as well. So you have another big coming in. Sakima Walker hasn't said if she's leaving or not, but Don Staley has been giving her a lot of praise in terms of her the way she's been practicing. It feels like that's the one that has really lost out on minutes this year just because they are so loaded up front. And, and then, of course, the big thing is nobody knows at this stage, where Sarah Strong is going. If they get Sarah Strong, this thing is illegal, and and they are obviously in with a very strong chance to get strong, no doubt. Now, when I said illegal, there's no recruiting violation, just illegal that they are so good. I'm not accusing them of being the Las Vegas Aces or New York Liberty. Now, at the start of the video, I jokingly said that South Carolina fan is living right. Everything's going your way. Well, essentially... What has gone your way is South Carolina has gotten a great coach who has developed there and turned South Carolina into a powerhouse. To be a good coach in college, you need to do two things. One is you need to recruit. But the other thing is when you get the recruits in, you need to hold them to your standard and build the culture. And that is what she's done. I don't know if you noticed, but in the last game, Versus Tennessee, Chloe Kitt and Raven Johnson did not start. She talked about in the press conference there was a minor violation. They dealt with it. We move on. We go on. And that's what she does really well. Whether it was Cardoso, I think, and Kitts early on in the season, they had an issue. As well, she's been pretty hard on Malaysia Full Wiley, but you know it's that she's wanting to get the best out of her potential and just to make sure that she plays defense and plays it hard the South Carolina way. Now, on a side note, I was watching like a clip from the Dan Levitard show, and they were, I think it was Jamel Hill they had on. They were talking women's college basketball and how the focus, is it unfair that all the focus is on Caitlin Clark? And then one of the comment commentators on there just kept on saying how you couldn't get any information on South Carolina and you couldn't find anything on South Carolina. And I, I was just like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Like, South Carolina is the heart of basketball. Like, they've been on ESPN repeatedly this year. I think game day went there as well. It is clear it is South Carolina's time. Like, UConn had their time, and UConn fan will come after me and say, how dare I say this? But it goes in cycles. It, it does. Like, when I was young, it was Miami. Miami was, you know national championship U, and then it went to Alabama. And basketball, women's college basketball, it's happening the same way. So it was UConn. They had an unbelievably long run, but it's clear the power has now shifted and is in South Carolina. Your comments and poison. Good night.